Democratic Senator Al Franken is stepping down. The Minnesota lawmaker made the announcement from the Senate floor Thursday following several sexual misconduct allegations. But as Nancy Cordes shows us, Senator Franken took a parting shot during his speech. I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. Senator Franken bowed to pressure today, but did not bow to his accusers. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. If anything, Franken suggested he is the victim of a double standard. I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office. Like President Trump, Franken is accused of groping multiple women before he came to Washington. I would have liked to see him uh, take some responsibility, but the end result was the same. Senator Amy Klobuchar is Franken's Minnesota colleague. Did you think it was important for him to step down? I felt that given what was going on, uh, that you had more and more allegations, that you had uh, members that were calling for him to step down, that uh, it was just going to become really difficult for him to do his job. The pair of Democratic resignations this week puts even more pressure on the GOP. And it's Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore. The man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls. Many Senate Republicans disavowed Moore again today. And I wish he were not our nominee. I think if he wins, he's the gift that keeps on giving for Democrats. Then, late this afternoon, they learned that Arizona Republican Trent Franks intends to step down. The eight-term congressman would not tell reporters why. I'll, I'll let the statement speak for itself. Okay. What does the statement say? Take a look at it. In that statement, Frank said that he may have been unintentionally insensitive when discussing the topic of gestational surrogacy with two of his female staffers. The House Ethics Committee announced that its members had voted to investigate whether Franks had engaged in sexual harassment. Elaine. Well, Nancy, what else do we know about Congressman Franks at this point? It would seem that this statement would seem to, to frame whatever happened within um, the context of he and his wife's infertility struggles. Right. And so he outlined in this statement that uh, he and his wife had tried to adopt initially. Uh, he's actually uh, the co-chair of the Congressional Adoption Caucus, but uh, that their attempts had never been successful. And so they were able to have twins via a surrogate and they wanted to have another child. What his statement does not make clear is whether he simply brought up the topic of gestational surrogacy with his staffers. Uh, and maybe in, went into details that made them uncomfortable, or if he actually asked them if they would be interested in serving as surrogates or knew someone who would. So uh, the statement leaves some details out, um, but clearly what prompted him to send out the statement and announce his resignation on Thursday was the fact that the House Ethics Committee had voted on the same day uh, to go ahead and open in, an investigation into whether he had either uh, sexually harassed anyone on his staff or whether he had uh, retaliated mm. against someone on his staff for opposing sexual harassment. Now, of course, that he is stepping down, it's likely that that investigation will be closed before it even really gets underway. Nancy, turning back to Senator Franken, could a Republican win a special election in Minnesota? Sure, it's always possible. Uh, Donald Trump lost Minnesota by less than two points. Al Franken himself barely won the seat uh, when he ran in 2008. He beat Norm Coleman, the sitting Republican, by 312 votes. It was one of the closest races in Senate history. So absolutely, that is something that Democrats are now nervous about, uh, something that they really would not have had to worry about at all had none of this ever surfaced. So uh, the, the good good news for Democrats is that the governor himself, Mark Dayton, is a Democrat. He will appoint a, a, an interim senator who is, of course, going to be a Democrat as well. And the big question is, you know, do you appoint a placeholder, someone who has no intention on running for office? So that sort of clears the decks for a special election later in 2018. Or do you appoint someone like, let's say, Keith Ellison, uh, who is 
a Democrat in the House from Minnesota uh, who already is uh, reasonably well known around the state, who does have a uh, stated interest in being in the Senate and who kind of gets a head start on that special election by coming over from the House to the Senate now. All right. Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill for us. Nancy, thank you. You're welcome.